piracy was once a despicable profession that was marked by violence, murder, hate, um, just pure evil incarnate. But thankfully, we've gotten past all that and we live in an age when it's really a highly marketable uh, genre of film or literature. We can take a look at essentially what sea terrorism and say, you know what, this is perfect for little kids. Let's market this towards them, which I think is really neat. I mean, pirates is a popular theme in just about anything. Your books, movies, uh, seasonably uncomfortable Halloween costumes. Uh, it just pervades pop culture as a whole, and it's really, um, it, it conjures up images of adventure and flamboyantly uh, swashbuckling characters uh, that we can really relate with, I guess. And we've gotten to a point where we can just completely ignore the millions of corpses left behind by pirates and uh, just ignore the fact that they were um, scurvy-ridden sea dogs and we can just embrace it for what it's really meant to be, which is good, clean family fun. Which is exactly what we're going to do today when we look at the game Jamaica. Now, Jamaica is a family-friendly, easy-to-learn racing game where the... The players will take on roles of, of different pirates that are competing to race around the island of Jamaica while, uh, while trying to pillage the most loot. And like I said, I don't actually advocate piracy. It's just a really fun thing that we can now share with our families. So uh, let's take a look at the game and I'll uh, let you know how it works a little bit and let you know what I think of it. Well, first thing first is, I mean, shiver me timbers. This box is just beautifully organized. Um, one of my biggest pet peeves when I get a new game is uh, if the box is just a disaster. I remember I opened Cosmic Encounter and couldn't believe just what a mess it was. Um, but this, I mean, everything fits perfectly. Now the goal of Jamaica, as I said before, is, is that it's a racing game. So you want to be the first one to complete one lap around the island of Jamaica. Now that isn't necessarily how you win. How you win is you complete the, the lap, which finishes the game, you also want to have the most uh, doubloons because you're a pirate and you know, that's, that's what you live for, is uh, pillaging and plundering. Now on your turn, um, assuming you're the captain, what you do is you take this compass and uh, it sits in front of you and indicates that you are the captain. You then roll the dice, and this is where the mechanics get pretty unique. Uh, you take each individual die and you place it on you decide the day and the night number. Now this comes into effect because each player has three cards in their hand with two different outcomes. On the left side is the day, on the right side is the night effect. So then, starting with the captain, you would resolve the effect. Now I could, depending on the card, I could get uh, you know, six doubloons because I placed the six on the daytime and move ahead five spaces because I've uh, used a card that has an arrow on the left side. Uh, there's certain spaces that have treasures. They may take, you know, you may have to take a longer way around the island to get them, but in the end, they could give you bonuses as high as seven points. Uh, another thing to keep in mind is that each space, almost every space, has a price to pay. Uh, it may be doubloons that you have to pay to port there for the evening, or it may be uh, resources you have to feed your crew. You need to not only race around the island, but you need to be able to pay the resources for each spot that you stay at. If you happen to land on the same space as another player, you then are in combat. Basically, the higher number wins combat. And the interesting thing about combat is there's also a resource that's gunpowder. Uh, you can add these into the fight before you actually roll the die, and this just adds on to the number that you've got there. The winner then gets to take from the hull of the losing ship, a huge aspect of the game that does require you to get across the finish line first. It comes in the form of these bonus points. Now anyone behind this red line gets an automatic negative five points, but the bigger issue is anyone beyond this starts to get bonus points. The first one to cross the finish line gets 15 bonus doubloons, uh, which is added onto their score at the end of the game. So the game is straightforward. Here you go, play with this. It's pretty straightforward. You're just trying to get as much gold as possible. A uh, few things about the game, I mean, uh, one thing that I find really odd is that there, as far as racial diversity goes in a game called Jamaica, I mean, this is, if this game were the Academy Awards, Spike Lee would uh, be boycotting it absolutely 100%. Strategy-wise, it's fairly simplistic. I mean, you're doing the same sort of actions and you're attempting to just get as much gold as possible, but it can play up to six players, which really, once the board gets, once the board gets crowded, it starts to get pretty darn interesting. Hey, buddy, you dropped your gun. There you are. Uh, especially with the combat, because you could be losing whole uh, entire holds of doubloons, which are really vital for the game. Um, 
So yeah, a little bit simplistic, but it works in its favor because it's easy to teach and uh, the components are just, I mean, unbelievably beautiful, especially well, with the way that they, they fit into the box. I mean, that's, that's worth its weight in gold, uh, I guess. That's, yeah, whatever. The other thing is the artwork. The artwork is absolutely fantastic in this game. Uh, it, it's super cool. Everyone's got the same cards um, as far as actions, but they line up and they actually make a, an entire panoramic if you were to line them up uh, and take the time to you know, figure out which order they go in, which I'm not going to do so. Another minor gripe that really goes with the thematic element of the game, which is a strong suit because it's a very thematic game, uh, as I said, Piracy Cells, is, our, is the rule book. I mean, there's some quick references, but this is just... I mean, the bane of my existence. When I'm trying to quickly reference something, they've made the entire rule book look like a treasure map. And so I'm sitting at the table trying to explain this game while it looks like I'm, I'm reading a newspaper. Uh, not the clearest set of rules and not, I mean, the rules themselves are clear. It's just the way it's laid out in, in the form of a treasure map honestly didn't do it for me. Uh, is probably my biggest annoyance with this game. That being said, it's a blast, and I'm surprised it hasn't caught on more than it already has. It's, uh, it's the type of game that's easy to teach to young kids, but has some staying power as far as strategy goes. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.